It's an ant. <laughs> Here on Action Retro, we do a lot of PCI-based Power Mac shenanigans. And one of the things we like to do is outfit machines with Firewire and USB controller cards and get them booting off of SATA and an SSD, which is a little bit ridiculous. But this is three slots taken up right here. And some Macs have very limited slots like our 20th anniversary Macintosh here, which has one. Well, thanks to a few good friends and some literal mad science level hardware hacking, I think we have a solution. So let's find out if this heavily modified obscure card is the ultimate card for PCI based Power Max. So stay tuned. And if you enjoy tales of massive multi-state spare no expense efforts to build the ultimate in obsolete technology, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. Our story today begins a few months ago in the deep reaches of West Virginia, when one of my favorite YouTubers, Greg from Rut K Mods, sends me an iMessage. And it's a picture of a really interesting looking red PCI card, which actually contains four types of connectors, USB, Firewire, SATA, and IDE. The most interesting thing though is a little chip on the right. It's the one that says Silicon Image SATA Link. You can just barely make out that part number, SIL3112, which is enough to make a certain type of vintage Mac nerd fall off their chair. Oh no, I'm falling out of my chair. Ah. Because with the right ROM, that controller can be made to work with Mac OS 9. We're talking fully bootable SATA SSDs. In fact, Greg happened to find a version of this card on an obscure French tech site and bought it. His came with the box and it's even advertising Mac compatibility, granted probably for OS 10. But with some fiddling and uh, <laughs> light wizardry, surely this thing must be able to work in Mac OS 9. Let's take a closer look at this card and see just what we're dealing with. Now this card has already been modified, although it's not obvious just by looking at it, what has been changed. But there are four chips on here to take note of. We have, of course, our holy grail of SATA controller chips, the Silicon Image SIL3112, which controls these two SATA ports on the end of the card here, and would actually also control the IDE connector if this card had one. In the middle here is a VIA chip, which is a Firewire controller that controls the Firewire ports. There are three of them. And this chip here is an NEC USB 2.0 controller. And there are four USB ports, one internal and three on the back. So yeah, a pretty well populated card. But in the middle here, this is an interesting chip. It's marked PLX Technologies and it's a PCI to PCI bridge. And essentially what it does is take the three almost completely separate cards on here and combine them into one PCI device. So this only takes up one PCI device in the host system. This chip is gonna become important later. Now, Greg wasn't just messaging me about this card randomly. He actually stumbled on another one. It popped up on eBay for, get this, 10 bucks. Needless to say, I snapped it up immediately because this would be the absolute perfect card for our wildly upgraded G4 swapped 20th anniversary Macintosh. If you wanna see all the wacky stuff we've done to this machine, start with this video right here. And although I flashed this type of SATA controller card on this channel before, which has that same chip, this red thing is gonna be a little bit different, mainly because it needs the ROM chip desoldered and a new ROM chip has to be programmed with the larger ROM and soldered back on. Greg was iffy about the undertaking and uh, well, it's well above my skill level. So enter a literal wizard, Colin Mister, who you might know as DOS Dude One. Right after this word about today's sponsor, PCB Way. You know, I bet you could build a modern recreation of a card like this and you could do it all with PCB Way. 
Not only do they offer high quality PCB prototyping and production, but they also offer on-site PCB assembly and they can source some of the components with their turnkey service. I'd love to see someone do this since this card is so obscure, but so perfect for so many PCI Power Mac owners. It's really amazing the things we can do these days with a professional PCB fabrication house like PCB Way. So if you have any PCB, 3D printing, fabrication, or prototyping needs, I hope you give PCBWay.com a try. So if by some strange fluke, you don't know who DOS Dude one is, I'll link to his channel and his video about this card hack down in the description. But he's done some world famous Macintosh hardware hacking, including improbable CPU swaps and custom upgrades, swapping RAM on unupgradable machines, and just literal actual wizardry. He was pretty sure that he could make this card flashable and get it working on Mac OS 9. So I shipped it over to him. He made a whole detailed video about that hack, which you seriously must watch. I'm not gonna spoil too much here. Spoiler, he got it working. But it wasn't an easy road, especially around that PCI bridge chip. Thankfully, in the end, and after a huge interesting thread on 68K MLA, also linked below, he got it working and booting with a patch to open firmware for that PCI bridge. And 68K MLA member Fipley created an open firmware patch application that we can use to patch the firmware easily. But the big question is, will this thing actually work in the TAM? It worked on a similar architecture Mac that Colin had, but it's never actually been tested in the computer that it would be best suited for the notoriously finicky TAM. All right, first boot of the TAM actually in <laughs> quite a while. And I have borrowed some cards out of here and put them back over the past couple of months. So yeah, here's hoping for an uneventful boot. Oh God, that, that chime, <laughs> that loud jump scare chime. All right, we are successfully booted into macOS 9.2 and System Profiler is showing our PowerPC G4 happily running at about 544 megahertz, which I think is actually running at 500, but hey, that's quite a step up from our 250 megahertz 604E. Anyway, we have to grab a couple files off of the network here. So we'll open Classilla. And I just have some stuff serving on another computer. 921681.6 port 4000. We're gonna need max zip. And we're gonna need bridge patch dot zip. All right, we'll unzip our patch here. It says 6500 bridge FW patch because the Power Mac TAM is based on the Power Mac 6500. So this patch should work on the TAM. Or we'll brick it, who knows. Am I sure I want to continue? Absolutely. All right. <laughs> Let's shut this down and install the other card. Okay, so previously we had an uncomfortably janky solution that looked like this. We have a USB controller card back here and dangling off that controller card is a fan to blow air over this uncomfortably tight fit here for the CPU upgrade card, which itself is a G4 swapped G3 upgrade. So very concerned about heat there and it's basically touching the RAM module. This fan is attached to the screw hole of the USB controller card and above that we have the SATA controller card with the SATA SSD just kind of dangling here and I routed a Molex connector from inside the machine to power our SATA drive here. And uh, yeah, really not comfortable with this setup. This fan does rest on the inside of the back panel, which does take some of the stress off of 
this PCI connector on the board here, but still having all of this weight on this PCI connector, that is not good. And I'm glad we're going to nix that because now we can use the single riser, which was intended for this machine and hopefully have our new SATA card boot this thing up. And now we can actually use this ComSlot 2 Ethernet card with the uh, ComSlot adapter here, which wouldn't fit with that super janky dual PCI riser card, which was not for this Mac. There we go. Time to boot this thing up and see if it works. Oh man, here we go. Oh my God, Happy Mac. Oh, it's booting. Holy crap. Oh my God. Oh, I can't believe it. It's working. I'm, <laughs> I have to take a picture and send it to Colin. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah, I forgot I installed Linux on here. We're not gonna mess with that now. Yeah, this is the most upgraded 20th anniversary Macintosh in the world. <laughs> Crescendo G4. Oh my goodness, I cannot believe it. This is so incredibly exciting. Okay, so after I installed everything, the SATA worked just fine, but it wasn't detecting USB or Firewire. So I had a quick chat with Colin who pointed me in the direction of an installer for a USB adapter card, which I think is kind of a universal installer to try to hit every possible PCI USB card. And uh, yeah, for some reason it's in German, but after I installed this German driver, we now have USB. So check this out. There's our USB controller, two USB buses, and uh, <laughs> yeah. We have USB and SCSI working. I'm not sure if Firewire is working. Maybe we'll have to install some weird German driver for that. Okay, so I downloaded an installer for Apple's Firewire drivers from Macintosh Garden. Let's see if this makes a difference. Okay, that doesn't seem to have worked. USB is fine. Here's our hard drives on SATA, but there is no Firewire. So since when do things just go to plan around here? And uh, wait a minute, something feels different. Anyway, I think I wanna do a fresh install of macOS 9.1 on this thing, because I'm pretty sure the Firewire stuff is just a driver issue. And the 9.0 install on here well, it's a little convoluted because I was doing a lot of wacky stuff like installing BOS in Linux for a triple boot on this thing. But before I do that install, there's something else I wanna do. A very kind friend of the channel recently sent in a pretty incredible donation. And in that donation was this, a fresh working drive for the TAM to replace this completely dead one. So I wanna crack this thing open again, toss this drive in there, and then do that fresh install of 9.1. It's definitely not the easiest machine to crack into, but once you have the hang of it, it's actually not too bad. And thank you again to the very kind person who donated this drive to the channel. Your sticker shall forever live inside this machine. Okay, new drive installed. Let's see if it works. Of course, the door doesn't really work. But hopefully this does. Oh, it's spinning. 
All right, maybe he doesn't like burn CDs. <laughs> How about an iOmegaWare install CD? Oh yeah, I hear it. There it is. <laughs> Excellent. We have a fully working TAM. Well, except for the hinge in here. I wonder if I can 3D print something to fix that. Oh, that is awesome. Thank you so much for sending this drive in. Okay, so that was really successful. Shockingly successful. We got almost everything working. USB works, SATA works, Firewire probably works. I think it's just a driver issue. And we can finally use the original Comslot 2 Ethernet card without that ridiculous janky two port PCI riser that I'm pretty sure was going to, at some point, destroy that PCI slot on the motherboard. But I think I'm gonna call this video here. I'm going to reinstall macOS 9.1 off camera and kind of just redo the whole operating system arrangement on here because there's something more special that I wanna do with this thing. I wanna install macOS 10, which if you believe the internet is supposed to be impossible, but I think I figured out the way around what people say bricks the machine. But thank you so much to Greg from Front K Mods, Colin Mister, DOS Dude One, everybody on 68K MLA who contributed to this. These are exciting times to be a 20th anniversary Macintosh owner. All 10 of us are super grateful. Oh, by the way, Mac Effects, if you're watching this, think we can get a clear back case for this thing? I know I'm probably the only person on earth who would actually buy one, but I really want one. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more shenanigans like this, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to Alex Hoffman, Camila Noseda, Chris Allegretta, Chris Biggs, Chris Calderon, Chris Nelson, Control Alt Reese, Daniel Hubbard, Greg from Hut K Mods, Justin Reed, Megahertz Models, Michael Mulhern, Paul Spencer, Ryan, Scott Thompson, Sutek, Tom Woodfin, Unknown Soldier 41, who are my highest tiered patrons and all of my Patreon supporters for helping to make these videos possible.